set up our castle. And tonight, we're going to be up there because they have something really cool going on. Like the start of the Christmas season, they have a castle of light. So I was wrong. It had nothing to do with the Christmas season, as you'll see. It was fantastic though. Please stay tuned to the end if you'd like to see some beautiful views of Scotland projected onto the castle. Kind of makes you proud to be Scottish, or at least live in Scotland, as is some people's case. and well-connected and handsome lion revealing his inner thoughts. The name is Rex, by the way. Rex Rampant. Oh, the things I've seen. You don't spend two and a half centuries up here without noticing a thing or two. Battles, sieges, kings, queens, and pop stars. A veritable who's who of the cognitive empty. The tales I could tell. Talking of which, what do you think of this beauty? Twin turbocharged swags, long reach mid swashers for those hard to reach corners, and a near legendary cleaning action. Ideal for big cat hairs. Oh, a giant place like this does not clean itself. The flower of nobility and the fruit of honor. With the union of the Scottish and English crowns in 1603, the regalia, or honours of Scotland, were placed in an oak chest in a strong room, where they lay untouched for over a century, only to be uncovered again by the romantic novelist and latter-day spin doctor, Sir Walter Scott. The crown jewels became a symbolic centerpiece during the visit of King George IV to Edinburgh in 1822. The visit was stage managed by Walter Scott with much of what we think of today as Highland dress and Scottish ceremonial tradition invented for the occasion. Third time lucky. 
The gun fired on the 7th of June and it has fired almost 50,000 times since, becoming a time signal the people of Edinburgh can rely on. However, out in the Firth of Forth, the gun cannot be heard. So a length of wire was stretched between the castle and Nelson's column on Calton Hill, where, to this day, a ball drops down a flagpole as the gun fires, giving a visual signal to any sailor with a spyglass. In some ways, you could say that where you are standing now is not just a castle. It's a time machine. The rock we are on dates from over 340 million years ago. It is the core of an ancient volcano and part of a massive volcanic complex which unleashed enormous forces, creating the Seven Hills of Edinburgh and shaping much of the landscape beyond. is what's left of the main part of the volcano, but ancient myths suggest an altogether different story for the origin of this landmark. A ferocious and greedy dragon circled the skies, terrifying everyone and eating everything it could find. Year after year, it terrorized the people, but in time, it grew so fat slow and lazy, that one day it settled on a nice spot and fell asleep, becoming the famous Hill and Crags. People have lived here for over 3,000 years. Pictish tribes left spearheads and mysterious objects. The Voltadini warriors traded with the Romans and named the place Din Aden. They are said to have feasted for a year before setting off to battle, never to return. In the Middle Ages, the Castle Crag became the home of royalty, and its tame became the royal mine. Not all visitors were friendly, however. Time for your nap yet. I never nap. I'm always on guard. I'm always vigilant. I'm always.
you're looking for? I see you've not got a guide with you. Now, I know a thing or two about this place. <coughs> we now find ourselves at the entrance to the most ancient part of the castle, the famous Fook, or Foggy Gate. Dating back to the 1600s, it is thought to be named after the thick, hard, or mysterious sea fog which sometimes shrouds the castle. <coughs> Or Foggy Gate. Dating back to the 1600s, it is thought to be named after the first car on the street.
Lukashka border region. Welcome to this castle of light. It gives me great pleasure to see you all gathered here. And now, let the festivities begin.
Research. It's all about history and the castle. It was fascinating, and I think they should do this all the time. It's the best way to learn history. Um, I thought it was great. My favorite part was probably St. Margaret's Chapel. The, the it looked like stained glass on the side. Stunning. Steve, was it worth it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah yep. I think it's definitely worth doing. I thought it was fantastic. And I could see this growing and then adding things to it in, as years, in years to come. I can see that. That's really good. So, that's it. That's the Castle of Light at Edinburgh Castle. Thank you all so much for watching.